biggest challenge or the greatest challenge that you've gone mm -hmm. through in your life? And then what did you learn from that challenge? I think the biggest challenge has been reassessing my value of who I am. Um, growing up, it's been a lot. And just in being a woman in business, a woman in corporate, you know, just all the stuff, having to deal with the different things, you know, basically my self-worth was established by how much I weigh and how much money I make. And so those were the, the key drivers for a majority of my life up until I was 26. It's how skinny could I get? And how much money could I make? Because that was the only way that I was going to assert myself as because I didn't have self-value. And so because I didn't have it, I had to seek the external validation and valuation. And something happened when I was 26. And um, I mean, I was basically that was the first time I started living. I up until then, I was it was all suffering. It's just just trauma and suffering and just deep, dark places and things like that. And I was finally at a weight that I felt healthy. I felt good about myself. I had a job where I was driving my career and I was earning the most money. So when I had finally achieved the external validation, I all of a sudden realized that I still didn't, I didn't feel complete. There was still something missing. And so I realized that seeking this external validation still required me to be a doormat and it required other people to assert themselves on me in terms of what they thought. And so I was like, I'm tired of this. I have worth. Um, and I actually remember watching the Joy Luck Club. It's one of my favorite movies. And there was a scene where the mom, the, the daughter's going through a divorce and the mom asks her daughter, what are you going to ask for? And she goes, what do you mean? She goes, what are you going to ask for? What is your worth? So the daughter was just trying to create this very peaceful, like divorce situation and hadn't looked at herself as a valid, valuable human being. And so I remember thinking about that movie and going, I have worth more than just what I look like or how much money I make, but I am, I am some, I'm a human. I'm worthy of things. I'm worthy of being loved. I'm worthy of loving myself. And then it shifted and things started being different. I'm not saying all of a sudden everything was easy, but now there was purpose. There was intention in my actions versus this arbitrary thing that I was chasing that never existed. Very, very cool. Why do you think weight and money? I think that's a lot to do. I mean, especially in the U.S. culture, um, I think that there's a lot to do across the world in terms of women establishing their worth. Um, but here particularly, I think there is a real problem with body image in terms of what is healthy. Um, and, you know, I mean, I grew up in the 80s, 90s. You know, heroin chic was what you were going for. And anything short of that, you were not desired. And so that message was constantly reinforced by everybody and everything. I mean, in the family, out of the family, by friends, by teachers, everywhere. So it was a message that I picked up that a lot of people pick up. And that, you know, when you look at who's successful, well, isn't it all about money? Isn't that what makes you happy? And so those two things were stories that I read at a very young age and got imprinted on me. And so it took a lot of undoing. And I still, I'm not going to say I'm like perfectly healed from that. There's still a lot of things that I seek to achieve because they're ego driven, but I counterbalance it to see where it lies in my heart and where the truth is. So that's how I check myself to be like, hey, is this really ego? It's okay if it's some ego, it's all good. Like I'm human, <laughs> but is there heartedness? Is there a reason? Is there a purpose? And that connection is where I can see the healing has happened and is continuing to work. That's awesome.